Welcome to Data Demystified. I'm Jeff Gallick, and this is my series of tutorial videos on how to use SPSS to work with data. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Descriptives tool in SPSS to help you understand your data. As always, we'll be using the YouTube Viewing Habits survey that I created, and you can find both a link to the data file and the video tutorial of the data below. Descriptives is a nice tool to give you a nice summary of some variable that you're interested in. So to use them, we go up to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, and Descriptives. This fairly simple window shows up and allows us to get some summary information of variables very quickly. What I like about this is that you can add a lot of variables at the same time to get a nice window into what your data look like. For, so for this, I'm going to add five different variables, these five different opinions that people have about YouTube. I'm going to select all five by hitting Shift and hitting the last option to select all of them, popping this over to the side over here, and I'm going to ask for a few options. So under options, by default, a few things are selected, but I'm going to ask for more. I'll ask for the sum, I'll ask for variance, the range, the standard error, the skewness, and the kurtosis, which are topics I'll cover in a different video, uh, and the ordering is fine as it is. I'll click continue, then I'll click OK, and here are my results. So what I can see for each of my variables, which are pretty well described because I like to put pretty descriptive labels to help me remember what these questions actually are. What's worth pointing out is that I have some missing values. So there's a thousand rows of data, but there's only 990 responses here, 991 here, 989 here, and so on. There's a nice little statistic at the bottom here, which actually basically says if you were to remove every data point that had any missing values, how many would you be left with? And the answer is 985. So we have to throw out 15 rows of data. I then see the range. There's six point range for each of these items. I see the minimum and the maximum. I see the sum, which is really not that useful, but I wanted to show you what that looks like. The mean, which can be very useful. The standard error. I see the standard deviation. I see the variance. And then I see some information describing the nature of the distribution. There's actually one more really nice feature that I want to show you with descriptives. So if we go back to analyze descriptives, descriptives, there's a button right here that I can check, which is save standardized values as variables. What that'll do is it'll create a Z scored or a standardized variable, a new variable in our data set for everything that I put in here. If you want to brush up on what a standardized or a Z scored variable is, I'll make a separate video for that topic. In any case, if I click OK and we go back to our data window, if I scroll all the way to the right now, there's a few new columns. These are the z-scored or the standardized variables for each of the items that I had in that descriptive table. That's a very quick and handy way to create these standardized variables, which are actually quite useful for other analyses like regression. So at this point, what I want you to do is pause this video and try this yourself. In particular, what I'd like you to do is try it with the variables called importance. So these are how important these different dimensions are in selecting whether you're going to watch a video or not. So go ahead and run the descriptives tool on them and see what you get. Go ahead and pause the video and give it a try right now. Okay, hopefully you've gone ahead and done that, and I'll do it as well. So if we go back to Analyze, Descriptives, Descriptives, I'm going to remove all these options. I'm gonna hit Control A or Command A, depending on whether you're using a Mac or a PC. Remove them, and instead I'm going to select these importance measures. So again, I'm gonna shift click to select all of them, move it over to variables, and I'll leave my options intact and click OK. And so here I see that actually we have full data for all of these variables, and I've got all my summary information here, including the range, including the minimum maximum, the mean, and so on. So again, a quick, nice, easy way to get that information. And because I kept that option selected to create those standardized scores, I have those as well. If I tab over to my variable view, I see them all down here. These are my z-scored or standardized importance measures. Again, descriptive is just a really nice tool for getting a quick snapshot of your data. That's it for this video. I hope you found this useful, and if you have any questions, please comment below, and I'll be sure to reply as quickly as I can. Aside from these tutorials, I'm on a mission to equip everyone with the information they need to thrive in our data-rich world. If you'd like to learn not just the mechanics of analysis, which these video tutorials focus on, but also learn the intuition behind the analysis you're performing, I strongly suggest you check out the other intuition-focused videos on this channel where I take the jargon out of statistics and data science and help you build a deep, intuitive understanding behind all the analysis that you're performing. I'll put a link below to a playlist of the videos that focus on just this. Finally, please take a moment to like the video, subscribe to this channel, and click that little bell icon so that you don't miss out on any new content that I put out. Thanks for watching.